Hey what's up guys my name is Anand and welcome back to my channel. In today's video I'm going to be going through 11 Google Ads strategies that you can implement to increase reach, increase your conversion rate, engagement on your website or your business and increase your revenue. And these are not just applicable for any one particular industry. It can be for an e-commerce brand, it can be for a retail brand, it can be for a B2B or B2C you know, enterprise uh, business. And of course, uh, I have added some tactics that can be useful for small business owners as well. So let's get started. All right, the first one is laying the foundation and making the most out of your website visitors. Or it can be an app user. Basically, the idea here is that when you have a website and when you're driving traffic to your website, through any kind of paid advertising, there's a good chance that people might be landing on your website through SEO, which is search engine optimization, through social media, direct or referral traffic. Try to build an audience out of people who have visited your website or people who have downloaded your app, using your app or taking any action. That way you can retarget them. So targeting you know, website visitors is a fantastic you know, strategy and this really helps you to create like different segments or uh, what do you call it? different buckets of your audience, right? The next one is analyze your user behavior. This can be you know, trying to understand how much people are spending their time on, let's say the contact us page, on a product page, on a service page versus just the homepage. So if they're spending a lot of time on your product page, but they have not converted, it means they have done a decent amount of research and they might just need an extra push. So try to analyze your user behavior uh, on your website or in your app, and then refine your targeting strategy accordingly. Once you have analyzed, you can then create different custom audiences. This is basically, uh, you know, creating an audience based out of people who spent more than three minutes on your product page. It can be an audience of just the returning visitors, or it can be an audience of all the people who have converted or bought products from your store or from your mobile app. Now, the high value customers are basically people who buy um, you know, products whose average order value is much higher than uh, your, you know, initial, um, what do you call, uh, set of, you know, lowest selling product, right? So try to create an audience based out of people who have, um, you know, high, high net or high value customers, and then you can then retarget them accordingly. Next one is implement a frequency capping. This is more in terms of, let's say you have a very limited audience, but you have a, a decent amount of budget and then you're hammering them with, with ads like multiple times. In that case, you can add a frequency cap. That way you don't have to uh, you know, create an audience fatigue or targeting fatigue where your audience are getting annoyed with multiple ads. All right, the next one is the importance of dynamic remarketing. Just like you know, I mentioned in the previous slide, you are building an audience out of people who have visited your website. Dynamic remarketing can really help you to uh, retarget with uh, very specific uh, messaging. Now, this is really helpful for e-commerce brand uh, because you can actually retarget them and show them the exact product that they you know viewed earlier, and that way the context of the ad is matching with what the user previously uh, was doing on your website, right? So that's dynamic remarketing and it helps really, really well uh, to personalize your ads based on their previous interaction. All right, the next one is, again, this is applicable for any e-commerce store, recapturing abandoned shopping carts. Now this is where you identify people who have added product to their cart and then they have not checked out, right? That's basically cart abandon, abandoners. Now, if you're on Shopify, you can use default, you know, Shopify settings where um, every user gets an email after they have abandoned the cart and, uh, you know, it improves the conversion rate. You can integrate Shopify with Klaviyo to provide uh, some advanced, you know, tactics where you can customize based on, um, you know, what product they watched or viewed or abandoned and then 
have like a marketing sequence going on. Uh, you can even have like customer win back strategy. There are a couple of things Clavio provides, but all of that can be done after you have driven traffic through paid ads, right? The next one is create compelling reminder ads. Again, if your audience size is big enough, you can maybe offer them a discount code. Again, free shipping to incentivize to complete the purchase. That's basically this is, right? Or you can have a limited time offer only for cart abandoners. So that way you are maximizing and improving your conversion rate. Uh, and implement sequential messaging. Again, um, there is something called as ad sequencing, which you can do where you're almost warming up your audience leading up to um, you know a promo or leading up to an event or uh, Black Friday slash Prime Day kind of you know event that is specific to your brand, right? So you can have something like a sequential ad that says that, hey, um, you know, Prime Day is coming soon. You know, I'm, I'm talking about Amazon in this case, but you can do something for your brand where XYZ Day is coming soon and then you promote that, build a list, and then you have another sequence of ads during the event. You have another sequence of ads for people who have abandoned or not engaged with you, and then you have a follow-up sequence. So that's how you can really use advertising tactics to um, form a well-defined strategy. All right, uh, the next one is you know maximizing customer value. Now this is where the tactic is to upsell and cross-sell. If you know that your um, ads are working really, really effective in terms of acquiring your first customer, like new customer, you can then provide a follow-up ad using Google Ads to upsell something and then increase the overall average order value of that cart, right? So that's basically an option of uh, you know, upselling uh, where you stack on top of the existing product or you can have a completely unrelated but still that makes sense in the form of combo offer to cross sell other products, right? That will enhance their original purchase. So if you buy a phone, you need a case, you need uh, protection, you may need an insurance, uh, you may need, um, you know, additional support, something like that, right? So that's how you can do cross-selling tactics and you can develop these tailored ad creatives uh, so that you can maximize and the goal here is to increase the average order value, right? So that's something that you can do if you have an e-commerce store. Um, finally, you know what I would say is um, before you do any kind of you know, e-commerce ads or shopping ads, try to organize your ads by categories. Now this is super effective because when you organize your feed by categories, you know that you can have some flexibility in terms of messaging, you can have flexibility in terms of budget, conversion tracking, data and analytics. This is actually useful, um, not just for yourself for organizational purpose, but it helps with like targeting as well. Like for example, if, if you are in electronic category, uh, then you can only target like tech enthusiast. You know, it can be a video ad and it provides like latest features. For fashion, it can be like, uh, you can target like style conscious shoppers and you can use carousal ads by showing like different merchandise or, you know, shopping clothes. And you can focus on like seasonal trends as the key message. Same for home and garden, you can target only homeowners. It can be an image ad and focusing on comfort, aesthetics and, you know, value. Uh, and then again, for shopping, sports and fitness, it can be like active individuals, it can be a responsive ad and the key message is performance, health, and nutrition, right? So those are some ways you can like customize it, uh, but to do that, you need to organize your product feed. And Shopify can do that very easily using tags. If you're on big commerce or any other platform, most of these ad platforms provide a way to do that. All right, um, this is actually extremely important. Once you are done setting up the campaign and everything, you need to make sure that you're optimizing your bids for a conversion. There are a couple of uh, you know bidding strategies. The first one is like target cost per acquisition. You can use it for basically any, um, you know someone who is filling out a form. If there is sign up or purchase happening, you can set a bare minimum CPA that you have to hit in order for your campaign to be successful. The next one is return on ad spend. This is useful for e-commerce business looking to maintain profitability 
and of course helps with like scaling the ad spend. Finally, we have maximize conversion. This is where you, Google, Google will uh, set the bids automatically so that you get as many conversions as possible. Uh, profitability is not the goal over here. The key here is to get as many conversions as possible. And then we have the most um, semi-automated way, which I don't recommend these days, which is enhanced cost per click, but you have more control over um, clicks and how much are you willing to bid for a single click. Again, if you are on limited budget and the goal is for brand awareness or driving traffic, only in that case I recommend you know enhanced cost per click. All right, um, one thing to keep in mind as you are running campaigns, ensure that your ads are relevant to your audience. This not just helps you with increasing your quality score, but it helps with you know maintaining the overall conversion rate or profitability of the campaign. And the way you do that is you basically identify your segments, you know, customize your messaging, ensure that you have compelling call to action. Say for example, you know, you create like campaign specific um, call to action. Then you can focus on like the unique motivation, unique selling points for each, you know, audience group. And then of course, uh, the goal here is to constantly do A-B test. You cannot get a winning combination and then you just you cannot just stick to it all the time. Things change, there is creative fatigue, so ensure that you're always doing A-B testing. Um, one thing on the audience is what will typically happens, uh, happen is you will run into like three different scenarios. One is like, hey, I want to be super, super niche and specific. Uh, the other one is like, I want to go as broad as possible. Try to take advantage of geo-targeting strategies. This is where you are targeting users based on city, zip, um, region, country, or even radius. This allows you to craft messaging and offers that is relevant to that local audience, right? You can even use like multilingual campaign. Now this is where you can translate your ad copy. You can use, um, you know, local language specific uh, you know, creatives in the imagery and in the ad copy so that it's uh, enhancing the effectiveness for different markets, right? And then also uh, make sure that you are um, using ad schedule. Uh, now, let's say you are a global brand. Uh, you don't want, you want your ads to run continuously, right? If nobody's shopping in the night. So try to take into consideration, not just time zone, but ad schedule, you know? I forgot to mention in the slide, but ad schedule is another tactic that is similar to time zone. So adjust your ad schedule in such a way that um, your ads are running in, in certain locations at certain times, uh, so that you can maximize ad delivery and visibility so that you get a uh, you know, good amount of engagement and hopefully conversion. So that's pretty much it guys, in terms of ads, Google ad strategies, I hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure to like, subscribe, and comment to my channel, and I will see you next time. Thank you.